الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في الكتاب الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by praising him by glorifying him We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower this gathering with his mercy say amen We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a source of benefit and, and mercy for us in dunya and akhirah Now as we mentioned every juma Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know The, the verses about taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O people of Iman, have taqwa of Allah, be conscious of Allah the way Allah deserves. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way He should be feared. Be aware of Allah as is His right. And don't die except in a state of Islam. Don't leave this world except in a state of Islam. And the realization that comes, and part of the meaning that's packed into this reminder weekly that we hear about, is that we're all on a journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our lives, with the passage of time, with every heartbeat, with every breath that we take, is being eroded away. Kind of like a, a, a slab of ice. As you leave it out, with time, what happens to it? It melts away. Our life is being melted away in that fashion. However, we are a human being that Allah has created and has given choice, and we have been sent to this world to do good. We have been sent to this world to be representatives of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be a khalifa of Allah on the earth. And the best example for us is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was sent to be the best example of those who are here to do good. And he was mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as rahmatul lil alameen, as a mercy. He was sent as a mercy to all of mankind, to all of the world. I didn't send you for no other reason, ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except to be a mercy for all of the world. So, the Prophet Sallallahu he taught us some very basic things. In his life Sallallahu he dealt with all kinds of people. He had people that showed animosity to him. He had people that hated him. He had people that, that mocked him. He had people that loved him. He had people that adored him. He had people that followed him. He had people that came to him with the most ridiculous questions. And he had people that came to him with the most intelligent, the most wisest of questions. And in every case, the Prophet Sallallahu dealt with the people in the best manner, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have only been raised up that I have only been raised up to, to complete and perfect the, the, the character of the, the, the most noble characteristics of the, the, the human character. And so Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one time, you know, He was in the masjid, sallallahu alayhi wa He was giving a talk about hajj. And he was talking about hajj. And he was talking about the rights and the, the regulations of hajj. When a man stood up in the back of the masjid, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, do we have to do hajj every year? Prophet sallallahu didn't respond. And he continued his talk about hajj. And the man asked again, Ya Rasulullah, do we have to do hajj every single year? The Prophet sallallahu didn't respond, and he continued. And the man asked again, Ya Rasulullah, do we have to do it every single year? <laughs> and and the you know, third time somebody pulled him down and said, down, you know, Prophet didn't respond. And afterwards he finished the talk and he said, you know, where is that person who was asking me the question? Come forward. And so the man came forward, the Prophet وسلم, pulled him and said, Look, he said, you asked the question, if I answered you then, you know, if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said yes, and I said, Yes, you have to do it every year, you wouldn't be able to do it. You, you don't have the capacity to do it. Why ask questions that make things difficult for yourself? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi he could have said to the man, no, you know, and, and publicly, you know, saying, you know, what kind of question is that? But the Prophet sallallahu he delayed answering him. Our scholar said to save his face. He didn't want to embarrass the man in front of the people. So he called him and talked to him privately. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu said, Ya Rasulullah, give me advice, give me the best advice. Advice that I will not, not need any advice other than that. Prophet sallallahu said, Qul amantu billah thumma Say, I believe in Allah, and then be firm upon that. 
Meaning, don't waver. Don't go back and forth in your, in your heart. You know, The truth is from your Lord. So don't become of those who are doubtful. Allah is the one who sent this to you. Allah is the one who sent this message to you. So don't become some of... And, and the Mufassirin, they said, commentary on this hadith, this person was wavering back and forth. Another man came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, give me advice. He said, La taghdab. Don't become angry. <coughs> He said, Ya Rasulullah, give me another one. He said, La taghdab, do not become angry. He said, okay, give me another one. He said, La taghdab, do not become angry. You know, the Prophet ﷺ repeated the same advice from three times. Why not this person get the same? Because the scholar said, this person had a specific problem with, with anger issues. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he was there to, te to teach every single person and to deal with them and to solve their own very problems. And he was a solution for all kinds of ailments the society was facing. And he gave us the recipe to do the same, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But, you know, in project management and all these different things people work at, there's a thing called scope. Where do you start? What is, what is your first goal? Where do you, you know, what's your, what's your measurement of your success? How are you... You know, how can you measure that you are achieving what you're supposed to achieve? What, you know, what's, what's the goal? What's the thing to do? What's the scope of your actions? So the Prophet Sallallahu he taught us, the people closest to you are the most deserving of your goodness. The people, people closest to you, Al-Aqrabun, Awla bil Ma'roof, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran. Those that are your closest relatives, those that are in your proximity, they are the most deserving of your kindness, they are the most deserving of your time, of most deserving of your generosity, of your charity. Those are the people you have to start with. And you all have people in your lives. You have family members, you have children, you have parents, you have neighbors, you have all these people around you, you know, where you can start implementing the prophetic teachings in your own lives. And so, you know, we've been talking about, you know, the role of, of, of the example of the Prophet ﷺ inside the house, dealing with the people close to them, dealing with the wife, dealing with the husband, dealing with the children. You know, the next people that are closest to you outside of your family is who? Who is it? The neighbor. Prophet ﷺ said, none of you truly believe. You don't have iman, basically. If you go to sleep full while your neighbor goes to sleep hungry. This is the Prophet ﷺ. He said, you don't have iman. And if you go to sleep and you're satiated, your stomach is full, and your neighbor is going to sleep hungry, ﷺ. He taught us this. And so we want to take this concept of neighborhood and extend it and apply it to our modern age because, you know, as you know, as, as we advance in our technology and all these other things, we, we become more connected on social media, we become more connected on Facebook and Twitter and all these other things, but really the humanity between us, our hearts, they're being more and more disconnected. And the Prophet ﷺ told us in one of the hadith that, you know, a time will come where everyone will put up their atbaq, the dishes, and people will start cutting ties of kinship. And subhanAllah, one of the miracles of this hadith, the dish, you know, the, the satellite dish that they, they put outside the homes that receives signals from the satellite that, that brings in all these entertainments and connects people digitally, this is what we call atbaq today. Prophet told us about that 1400 years ago. He said people will start connecting digitally and they'll start putting up their dishes so they can receive satellite signal and they're connected in the grid but they're disconnecting with each other, sallallahu alayhi wa He told us about that. And so, what does it mean to be neighbors with someone? You know, it means to know them. It means to know what's going on in their lives. It means to know whether they're well or whether they're sick or whether they're ill. This is what it means. And the Prophet ﷺ had all kinds of neighbors. You know, when he used to go out in Medina to the masjid, there was a Jewish neighbor. Prophet ﷺ had a Jewish neighbor who hated the Prophet ﷺ. She wanted everything possible, to, you know, she wanted to do everything possible to harm the Prophet ﷺ. And the, the only thing she had that power to do, ability to do, was throw trash on the path of the Prophet ﷺ. Every morning when he goes to pray, Wasallam. And she would, sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would get, you know, the trash would, would fall on him sometimes. She would actually get him with it. And she would put najasa and things on him, Wasallam. And he wouldn't say anything. He'd just turn around, go back, clean himself, and go back to the masjid. And one day she didn't do that. Second day she didn't do that. Prophet ﷺ went and knocked on her door. She opened the door, you know. I, I was just concerned about you. You know, usually I, we have some interaction and past few days I haven't, I haven't seen you or heard from you. I hope you're okay. I brought some food, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Right? And she saw Rasulullah saw, he wasn't faking it. He was genuine. He cared about her. He was concerned about her. And when she saw that, subhanAllah, she said, you know what? I was wrong. This whole time I was wrong. You know, I shadu an la ilaha illallah, shadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. She came to accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the, 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 the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was as a neighbor. And so we have today, you know, we drive in the cars, we're in the drive, you know, busy highways. There are people driving next to you. You know that, right? And some people, it's like me, and, and there's nobody else here. They will cut people off, they will do this, they will do that. How about some neighborly treatment on the road? How about some neighborly treatment, you know, with the, with the, the you know, people that we live close to, the proximity around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us, awla bil ma'roof. And if you want to envision this in, in a way, imagine yourself as a beacon of light, right? Who should receive the most intensity of that light? The people around you. And as the light spreads further and further and further, it's okay if it fades. But those that are around you should know you are a carrier of light. You are a carrier of the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And if you're not shining the light of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa then there's something wrong. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, none of you truly believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to forgive us. So in conclusion, uh, let's have a look at our lives. Let's see how we have been. Because, you know, there are all these teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Whether we're applying it or not, this, this is a question. And the way to measure it is to look at how we are with those that are closest to us. Our family members, our relatives, our, our neighbors, and, and, and beyond that, our community, our masjid, you know, bro brothers and sisters in the masjid we pray at, then we go extend beyond that. But beginning spot is this, your family and those around you. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who truly apply the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill us with iman. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, you're the one who, 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 who controls all the hearts, Ya Allah. We ask you, keep our hearts firm upon your deen, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you to make us of benefit to mankind, Ya Allah. And don't make us of those who contribute to the problems of humanity, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman, Rahimin, we ask you to make us upon the, upon the straight path, Ya Allah, until the last breath leaves us, Ya Allah. And make our last words, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Ya Allah. And we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen, make our lives a testimony to that statement, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Anyone going through hardships, Ya Allah, grant us ease, Ya Allah. Anyone amongst us going through difficulties in their families, Ya Allah, we ask you to unite our hearts, Ya Allah. We ask you to shower your mercy upon us, Ya Allah. Anyone struggling in their iman, Ya Allah, make us of those who establish the prayer in their homes, Ya Allah. Anyone going through difficulties in their in their financial affairs, provide for us, Ya Allah. Halal in tayyib rizq, Ya Allah. And don't make us depend on anyone other than you, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman, Rahimin. Anyone going through difficulties in their health, Ya Allah. Grant us shifa, Ya Allah. There is no cure except from you, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamar Rahimin. You are the one who have said, I respond to your du'as. Ya Allah, these are our du'as, Ya Allah. And from you is the response, Ya Allah. And your promise is true. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa akhurat da'wana. And alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Aqimu salah.